Hello, everyone, and welcome to the True Crime Never Sleeps podcast. In this episode, we continue our series, Shit Out of Luck, and looking in to the life and crimes of Albert Fish, a serial killer and cannibalistic man. Albert Fish was an American sadomasochistic serial killer and cannibal. He was also known as the Gray Man, the Werewolf of Wisteria, and possibly the Brooklyn Vampire. He boasted that he had children in every state, putting the figure at around 100. He was born as Hamilton Fish in Washington, D.C. He said he had been named after Hamilton Fish, a distant relative. His father was 43 years older than his mother, he was the youngest child and had three living siblings, Walter, Annie, and Edwin Fish. He wished to be called Albert after a dead sibling and to escape, escape the nickname Ham and Eggs that he was given at, a, at an orphanage in which he spent many of his early years. Fish was a serial killer in the early 20th century and got off on self-mutilation and pain before making the jump to torturing and cannibalism. He was raised in an orphanage after his widowed mother couldn't afford to raise four children. Fish's family had a history of mental illness and the serial killer suffered from a number of disorders. Life in the orphanage. The people in charge would beat the children and encourage the children to beat each other. This is where Fish learned to associate pain with pleasure. His mother was able to get her life on track and bring fish home, but the damage was already done. Soon, he started to experiment with other people's pain and developed a sexual desire for pain. Fish eventually married and fathered six kids. He never tortured his family. When Fish lost control over his mental illness, his wife left him, and Fish graduated from self-harm to murder. He started a homosexual relationship in 1882 at the age of 12 with a telegraph boy. The youth also introduced Fish to such practices as drinking urine and other stuff I should not say on this channel. Fish began visiting public baths where he could watch boys undress and spent a great portion of his weekends on these visits. By 1890, at age 20, Fish arrived in New York City and he said at the point he became a prostitute and began raping young boys. In 1898, his mother arranged a marriage for him with Anna Mary Hoffman, who was nine years his junior. They had six children, Albert, Anna, Gertrude, Eugene, John, and Henry. Throughout 1898, Fish worked as a house painter. He said he continued molesting children, mostly boys younger than age six. He later recounted an incident in which a male lover took him to a waxworks museum where Fish was fascinated by a bisection of a genitalia. After that, he became obsessed with sexual mutilation. In 1903, he was arrested for grand larceny. Throughout 1898, Fish worked as a house painter. He said he continued molesting children, mostly boys, younger than age six. In January 1917, Fish's wife left him for John Straub, a handyman who boarded with the Fish family. Fish then had to raise his children as a single parent. It was about this time that Fish began to indulge in self-harm. He would embed needles into his abdomen. After his arrest, x-rays revealed that Fish had at least 29 needles in his pelvic region. He also hit himself repeatedly with a nail-studded paddle. While Fish was never thought to have physically attacked or abused his children, he did encourage them and their friends to paddle his buttocks with the same nail-studded paddle he used to abuse himself. He soon developed a growing obsession with cannibalism, often preparing himself at dinner consisting solely of raw meat and sometimes serving it to his children. And now on to his early attacks and attempted abductions. 
Fish committed what may have been his first attack on a child named Thomas Bedden in Wilmington, Delaware in 1910. Later, he stabbed a mentally retarded boy around 1919 in Georgetown, Washington, D.C. Consistently, many of his attended victims would be either mentally retarded or African-American because he believed these would not be missed. On July 11, 1924, Fish found eight-year-old Beatrice Keel playing alone on her parents' Staten Island farm. He offered her money to come and help him look for rhubarb in the neighboring fields. She was about to leave the farm when her mother chased Fish away. Fish left, but returned later to the Keel's barn, where he tried to sleep for the night before being discovered by Hans Keel and told to leave. Grace Budd On May 25, 1928, Edward Budd put a classified ad in the Sunday edition of the New York World that read, Young man, 18, wishes position in country, Edward Budd, 406 West 15th Street. On May 28th, Fish, 58 years old, visited the Budd family in Manhattan, New York City, under the pretense of hiring Edward. He introduced himself as Frank Howard, a farmer from Farmingdale, New York, when he arrived. Fish met Bud's younger sister, 10-year-old Grace. Fish promised to hire Bud and said he would send for him in a few days. On his second visit, he agreed to hire Bud and convinced the parents, Delilah Flanagan and Albert Bud I, to let Grace accompany him to a birthday party that evening in his sister's home. Albert Sr. was a porter for the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Grace had a sister, Beatrice, and two other brothers, Albert Bud II and George Bud. Fish left with Grace that day, but never came back. Seven years later, in November 1934, an anonymous letter was sent to the girl's parents, which led the police to Albert Fish. The letter was delivered in an envelope that had a small hexagonal emblem with the letters NYPCBA representing New York Private Chauffeurs Benevolent Association. The janitor of the company told the police he had taken some of the stationery home, but left it at his rooming house at 200 East 52nd Street when he moved out. The landlady of the rooming house said that Fish checked out of that room a few days earlier. She said that Fish's son sent him money, and he asked her to hold his next check for him. William King was the chief investigator for the case. He waited outside the room until Fish returned. Fish agreed to go to headquarters for questioning, then brandished a razor blade. King disarmed Fish and took him to police headquarters. Fish made no attempt to deny the murder of Grace Bud, saying that he meant to go to the house to kill Grace's brother Edward. Fish said, it never even entered his head to rape the girl, but he later claimed to his attorney that while kneeling on Grace's chest and strangling her, he did have two involuntary ejaculations. This information was used at trial to make the claim that kidnapping was sexually motivated, avoiding any mention of cannibalism. Albert Fish was executed at Sing Sing Prison in New York. The, quote, moon maniac was one of America's most notorious and disturbed killers. Authorities believe that Fish killed as many as 10 children and then ate their remains. Fish went to the electric chair with great anticipation, telling guards, it will be the supreme thrill, the only one I haven't tried. This, gave, this episode gave you chills, didn't it? Thank you all for listening. Hope you liked it. Let us know your thoughts on Albert Fish. Send us a tweet at True Crime NS. Or find us on Instagram or Facebook. Just search True Crime Never Sleeps. And we'll see you next time on the True Crime Never Sleeps podcast. Take care. <laughs>